good morning dear students as already i have started the chapter pressure belts and winds and i explained you about the atmospheric pressure and the factors which affect the air pressure then i have started about the wind systems of the earth and i told you i explained you about the that these wind system can be categorized into three types the first is the primary circulation in which i explained you about the permanent winds in the secondary circulation i explained you about the periodic winds and the seasonal winds and today now let me explain you about the what is periodic wind i will show you the example of the periodic wind and also the seasonal wind for this i need to show you the diagrams and today because i need to show so many diagrams and this is why from now onwards from here i will teach you from directly from the book so look here i explained you about the primary circulation in which i explained you about the permanent winds trade winds westerlies and polar easterlies i explained you then secondary circulation which consist periodic or seasonal wind periodic winds like land and the sea breeze seasonal winds means monsoon winds cyclones and anti cyclones the third category is the tertiary circulation which includes all local and variable winds so today let's see here now first of all some diagram i want to show you from the diagram i want to explain you because these diagrams i have not shown you in the previous window uh, videos so look here this is the world pressure belts and the wind system and this is what i explained you already this is equatorial low pressure low pressure belt which is also called doldrum this is subtropical high pressure belt which is called horse latitude and this is temperate low in the both hemisphere you can see here this is polar high pressure belt on the both the poles now between these pressure belts if you will find from the subtropical high pressure belts there are the wind blows from high pressure to low pressure in the northern hemisphere these winds they blow from north to south and in southern hemisphere they blow from south to north means to up to equator but you can find here these winds are deflected in the northern hemisphere they are deflected right hand side because of the coriolis effect in the south southern hemisphere it is deflected left hand side and so these winds the trade winds they are called or they blow first of all the north east direction though that's why they are called north east trade winds in the southern hemisphere they blow from the south east direction and that's why they are called south east trade winds same way between the subtropical high and temperate low in the both the hemisphere you will find the, these winds they blow from the from the high pressure to low pressure but in diagram as you can find it is shown that they are deflected but usually what happens one thing i want to explain you about the coriolis effect the coriolis effect it just keeps on increasing from equator towards the pole region so towards the polar region in the both hemisphere the coriolis effect keeps on increasing and this is why in this uh, temperate zone these winds westerlies now usually in the diagram if you see it shows the south westerlies blowing from the south direction southwest and here in the northern hemisphere they are blowing from the northwest but what happens they are deflected so much that they starts blowing usually from west to east and this is why these winds in the both hemisphere they are called westerlies they are not called the south westerlies or north westerlies they are called westerlies same way there are the winds from the polar high blows up to the to the temperate low 
in the both hemisphere you can find and they are called polar stellae. So these are the permanent winds. Now why I am showing you? I want to show you, I want to just explain you about the seasonal shifting of pressure belt. This already I explained you but I want to show you this map. And if you see here in this map, this is the normal position usually in March and September when the sun rays falls vertical on equator. So you will find here the low pressure that is the equatorial low pressure which is also known as the doldrum. It lies on equator. This is the normal position. But what happens in summer in, in, in June? All of you know on 21st June the sun rays falls vertical on Tropic of Cancer. So what happens here? This uh, doldrum, the low pressure, equatorial low pressure belt, it shifts in the northern hemisphere. You can find here. It shifts in the northern hemisphere and together with this uh, pressure belt, all the pressure belts you can find they shift upward from their normal position. Not only in the northern hemisphere but also in the southern hemisphere all the pressure belts they shift upward and with this pressure belt even the, the region of these uh, permanent winds it also gets changed. Now what happens in the winter season? In winter season if you will find this is the doldrum low pressure belt equatorial low pressure belt. Now what happened? This is the time. December, month of December, 22nd December, all of you know the sun rays falls vertical on Tropic of Capricorn. And so, these, this belt, the equatorial low pressure belt, it shifts in the southern hemisphere and together with this belt, all the pressure belts you can find, they just shift downward, not only in the northern hemisphere, but also in the southern hemisphere uh, from their normal position. Now because of this you can find here, this is given written here Mediterranean land. Now because of this actually what happened. Now usually if you find these westerlies, let me just show you the one map. In that I will explain. So look here, this is a map actually and I want to show you, explain you with this map. Now usually this is the region of westerlies. This, the Europe the region of you can see here this is the cool temperate region of Europe this usually comes under the influence of westerlies during the summer but what happened because of the shifting of pressure belts as all the pressure belts they shift downward even the these westerlies also they starts blowing downward now means this Mediterranean region now comes into the influence of westerlies. So these winds blow inside here they pick moisture and shed rainfall here and this is why the Mediterranean region receives rainfall during winter season. So this is a one most important effect of the shifting of the pressure belt. So this one I want to show you explain you with the help of this diagram. Now next one I want to explain you about the periodic and seasonal wind. First of all we are going to see about the periodic wind. Now all of you know about the land and sea breeze. Now you can see here the, the picture here. And in this uh, photograph you will find here what happens during the day. Now the land becomes uh, warmer while the temperature in the over the ocean it remains the same just change very slightly so what happened here the warm air just rise up on the land and here the cool cooler air comes down there over the sea and there is one circulation occurs in which actually the wind starts blowing from land to sea now this occurs during the day but what happened during the night all of you know this so during the night the land very quickly radiates the heat and becomes cool but temperature over the ocean remains the same so here the cooler air now comes down here while over the sea the warmer air it's rise up and now the circulation get reverse and the wind starts blowing from land to sea 
So you will find here this uh, sea and the land breeze usually what happen after a certain period these winds they reverse their direction and that's why these winds are called periodic winds. Now let's move to the next wind that is the seasonal wind and this is an example monsoon winds. And now let me explain show you the figure here by the diagram I want to explain you. So this is you can find here this is a region. This map is given here India and the neighboring countries and you will find here during the summer season what happened this is a summer monsoon. So during the summer the wind starts blowing from southwest direction picking moisture from Arabian Sea, Bay of Bengal and Indian Ocean and as it enters in India and here you can see Himalayas are there. Himalayas trap these winds and this is how the Indian not only India but all the whole South Asia and even the Southeast Asia this whole region actually receives rainfall very very heavy or very good rainfall which we call the rainy season. But uh, what happens during the winter season? Now this is another diagram you can find here during winter what happened as the condition gets cooler here over the northern part of India and what happened a high pressure is formed and the wind starts blowing from northeast direction towards southwest you can find here this winds they just reverse their direction and this is the this is also known as northeast monsoon and you will find these winds blow from the north there is no water body and in fact there is a himalayas so these winds are cold and dry so this is also known as winter monsoon or northeast monsoon so here you will you have seen that how after six months for six months the wind blows from southwest direction and for the six months the wind blows from northeast direction and this is why these winds are called seasonal winds because they influence the season now let us move to the tertiary circulation I told you to show you about the tertiary circulation. So if you will find here, here it is given about the local winds and in your book if you will check it in tertiary circulation two types of winds are kept there all the local winds and variable winds. So I want to just uh, differentiate between the local and the variable winds. There is a very slight difference between local winds and variable winds. So first of all I, I, I would like to show you about the variable winds. So if you will find here the first one is mount, uh, mountain and the valley winds. So mountain and valley winds you can find usually they blow in the mountainous region. Mountains are found in all the continents and everywhere in in the mountainous region these winds are called mountain and the valley winds. Now what happens in this mountain and the valley winds? Now usually what happens? Now dear students first of all I want to just give one correction here because the book what I am using here even the book what you are having there are some mistakes. Now here it is given that mountain and valley winds as a periodic winds and even the mountain and the valley winds are also called the catabatic and anabatic winds and I will explain you how they are different and they are known as shown here as local winds. But actually both the winds are they are kept into the category of variable winds. So the mountain and valley winds if you will find what happens that uh, on the mountain sides what happen under a very very clear night sky. So the heat radiates faster and the mountain becomes cool. And what happens here the air starts blowing from mountain to valley. So during the night you will find the wind starts blowing from mountain to valley but 
ड्यूरिंग द डे टाइम द विंड स्टार्ट ब्लोइंग फ्रॉम वैली टू माउंटेन नाउ वाई आई एम टेलिंग यू दैट दे आर नॉट द प्रियोडिक विंड्स ना यूजली वन एग्जाम्पल ऑफ प्रियोडिक विंड्स आई हैव एक्सप्लेन यू अबाउट द सी एंड द लैंड ब्रीज इन द सी एंड द लैंड ब्रीज द विंड रिवर्स देयर डायरेक्शन एवरी डे विदाउट any change this so every day it just happens the same way but in the mountain and valley winds it doesn't necessary that every day the wind gets reverse the direction so there are special conditions are needed and when these condition it forms there in this mountainous region so what happened during the night the wind starts blowing from mountain to valley and during the day the wind starts blowing from valley to mountain but sometimes it may not occur that's why these winds are kept into the category of variable winds now you'll find here the catabatic and anabatic winds and in the bracket they are shown as the mountain and valley so catabatic and anabatic winds are all same mountain and the valley valley winds but how they are different usually the catabatic and anabatic winds usually blows or you can see they are found in the region where the whole mountain and the valley is the whole region are covered with the snow so what happens when the mountain the wind blows from mountain to valley they are all covered with the snow the ice sheet glaciers so they are called catabatic winds while during the day when the wind starts blowing from valley to mountain they are called anabatic winds so both these winds are kept into the category of variable winds now here if you'll find why they are different from the local winds you must be thinking that why these variable winds are different from the local winds now when you see about the local winds like example lu Sirocco. Now these winds, if you find about the loo, so the loo blows only in the northern part of India. They are not found in any other part of the world. So all the local winds they usually found in a very specific region, and they are not found found in the any other country or any other region part, any other part of the world. But here, the variable wind we have seen here, the mountain and the valley breeze and the catabatic and anabatic winds, they usually. are experienced in all the mountain and valley region of the world in all the continents so this is how they are different so now let's start here about the local winds first of all the local winds can be kept into two category two broad category they are the hot local winds and the cold local winds so one by one we are going to see here so first of all the first hot local wind is harmattan Harmattan is a hot local wind usually blow in the western africa and usually it blows in the desert of sahara and in the countries of niger and nigeria usually you can find these winds harmattan they are very very hot winds and hot and dusty next is the khamsin as you can find here it is also a hot dusty wind usually they blow where in egypt so you can find here this is a map and you can find this is khamsin is shown here so in egypt usually they blows from sahara desert that is from blows from south to north in uh, here region you can find here niger and nigeria i, I already i told you about harmattan then after comes in the next uh, local wind is the loo and all of you know about the loo they are the hot and dry winds blows in the summer months that is the month of april may and june in in the state of rajasthan gujarat haryana punjab uttar pradesh and even in the western part of madhya pradesh so usually they blows in the northern part of india next is the sirocco sirocco is a very very hot and uh, dusty winds and already i have shown you here in the africa in the north western part of africa these winds they blows in the sahara desert so they are the same now what happen here these winds they cross the mediterranean sea and they reach in europe that is in italy so they pick up lot of moisture and that's why if you find these all winds actually they they and you will study the very 
द डीप स्टडी अबाउट दीज इवेंट्स यू फाइंड दे आर ऑल डिफरेंट दे आर ना दे आर मे बी इन सम कैरेक्टरिस्टिक दे मे रिजम्बल बट यूजली दे आर ऑल डिफरेंट इवेंट्स सम ऑफ द करेक्टर्स इट डजेंट आर द सेम नेक्स्ट लेट सी हियर अबाउट द जोंडा जोंडा इज ऑल्सो अ हॉट विंड एंड इट ब्लोज इन द कंट्री ऑफ अर्जेंटीना एंड रूगवे इन साउथ अमेरिका ना यूजली दिस जोंडा जोंडा विंड एक्चुअली दे आर हॉट एंड सल्ट्री विंड सल्ट्री मीन्स इट इज अ ह्यूमिड विंड बिकॉज इट कैरी इज अ मॉइस्चर देयर सो इट्स नॉट ड्राई विंड बट इट इज हॉट एंड सल्ट्री मीन्स ह्यूमिड विंड्स एंड दैट्स वाई दिस नेम जोंडा इज गिवेन हियर दैट जोंडा इज एक्चुअली इज अ लोकल uh language well next is the the same type of zonda there is a fawn fawn is the also a warm winds and they usually blows in the andes and chinook also is a wind warm and warm winds right not hot but warm in and they blows in the rockies in north america now next is the blizzard blizzards are the cold wind as you can find and usually what happen these winds they will blow from the polar region they break out the when they sometimes break out from the polar region and enters in north america so they brings uh, the snowfall in the whole canada and the central part of uh, united states of america they comes into the influence of this blizzards so they are very very intensive cold winds icy cold winds they and uh, they brings the snowfall next is the bora now bora as you can find here bora mastro and mistral these all are the cold winds and all these three winds they blow in europe now only the difference is they blow in the different parts of europe next is the polar outbreak now polar outbreaks actually are the wind which actually sometimes when the from the polar region the polar easterlies all of you have studied now when they sometimes without because of some special condition they just uh, cross their limit usually they blow from all of you know in the polar region but sometimes they cross the limit and they enters in the in the temperate region so these winds are known as polar outbreak so they are the cold winds they bring the snowfall and they are very severely cold wind now next is the the fawn as you can see here fawn are the not neither cold neither hot wind but they are the warm wind because fawn usually blows in the temperate region so they are not so hot and dusty like the wind blows in the sahara desert and like the loo in india so but these winds are warm and they just makes the condition there in whatever region in especially in the europe the it just uh, makes the condition very very dry and what happened because they are warm winds and they just uh, dry up the moisture and because of this what happened this is the time actually when the forest fire can become very very common in this region where these winds blow so in the europe there is a fawn in uh, north america there is a chinook and uh, in um, south america there is a zonda same type of wind they just pick up the moisture and they just dries the whole region makes the condition very drier now next is a chinook chinook word means the snow eater because it melts the snow next is the norwester as you can see here norwester also is the same type of wind strong winds blows in new zealand warm winds like the fawn and chinook they also melts the snow and then there is a dust devil dust devil is a very hot wind hot and dusty wind usually blows in the central part of sahara and because they are very 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 hot not only hot and dusty but they are very very high speed winds high speed local winds like a storm and that's why they are called dust devil now let's move to the special winds around the world and they are the cyclones and anti cyclone so first of all let me explain you about the cyclone the cyclones again are of two types tropical cyclone and temperate cyclone now usually the tropical cyclones they blows 
in the tropical region now usually the tropical cyclone are dif totally different from the temperate cyclone now let me just show you with the figure here first of all now if you'll find here this is a region of low pressure surrounded by the high pressure so in this condition the wind starts blowing from all the direction to inside and this is what what happened a cyclone is formed now in the northern hemisphere here actually what happened these winds actually they starts moving in which direction anti clockwise right but in the southern hemisphere these cyclones they move in clockwise direction now why it is anti clockwise and clockwise because of the coriolis effect as i explained you because of the coriolis effect all the moving bodies they are deflected right hand side so what happen these cyclones they move in anti cyclone anti clockwise and in the southern hemisphere all the moving bodies they are deflected left hand side and that's why they cyclones move in clockwise direction now here these tropical cyclones are very very high speed winds they are a storm actually and they just brings uh, heavy rainfall also and whatever region which is hit by the cyclones they just destroys everything now next is the temperate cyclone now what is the temperate cyclone now temperate cyclones are the these cyclones are not at all uh, destructive now what happen here in the temperate region when the cold and the warm winds they meet together so usually the warm winds they bring the clouds and these clouds as they meet with the cold wind they these clouds they rise up and it just push the clouds in the cool, in the higher altitude where what happen these clouds condensed and rainfall occur and this rainfall is not very heavy so usually these winds they bring rainfall in the temperate region in india also if you see in the winter season in the month of december and january what the rainfall what we experience that is a example of the temperate cyclone and usually these winds these rainfall usually are caused by the temperate cyclone so you have seen here the two types of cyclone tropical cyclone and the temperate cyclone now next is the anti cyclone now anti cyclone are just opposite of the cyclone as you can find here in the diagram i am showing you now the cyclone i told you they are the region of low pressure but here the anti cyclones are the region of high pressure surrounded by the low pressure so what happen here the wind starts blowing from inside out in the all direction so when the anti cyclone usually uh, occurs so we don't even uh, uh, means feel it because what happened usually it occurs during the winter season so what happens when the anti cyclone occurs so the sky becomes clear and it is very sun sunny day next next day and it is very fine weather so whenever sometimes when the conditions are very very foggy and very very cloudy and suddenly next morning you see the everything is gone the sky becomes clear and fog is gone and it is very pleasant day so this is the this shows about the anti cyclone now this anti cyclone you will find i told you they, they are just opposite in every way so what happen these uh, anti cyclones in the northern hemisphere they move in the clockwise direction i told you, i have shown you cyclone move in anti clockwise but the anti cyclone they move in clockwise direction while in the southern hemisphere they move in anti clockwise direction and as i told you why it happens because of the coriolis effect now one thing is more left i want to just finish it with this and that is the tornadoes now these tornadoes usually you have heard it and maybe you have seen in the uh, discovery and the national geographic channels now these tornadoes they are also a cyclone but they are totally different from the normal cyclones now usually the cyclones usually which uh, occurs in the gulf of mexico 
they are called hurricane in south china sea the cyclones are known as typhoons now in india there is a hindi word we use chakravat so now in the australia they are known as willy willies now these are the names of the different uh, cyclones they are all cyclones but tornadoes are totally different from the common cyclone now usually in tornado what happen these cyclones develops in the high sky at high altitude and from there it just comes down so you may have seen the so many documentaries and the videos so and this is not a big size usually the cyclones are very very big in size they cover a big region like uh, the region of whole state the state of uttar pradesh or maybe the whole state of uh, bihar and west bengal this much size of uh, cyclones can can be but the tornadoes actually are very very small in size and as they move but they are very very strong so what happen wherever they move they destroys everything so these are the cyclones and tornadoes this here the tornadoes actually they only can be experienced and only can be seen in the region of mississippi valley of usa in this, in this uh, region is also known as a texas state so in the st state of texas and the surrounding areas these uh, tornadoes usually uh, are experienced so still the scientists are researching and they are finding out why these tornadoes why they develops here in this uh, uh, mississippi valley so this is over now this chapter all of you just read the the whole chapter and if we get any time for the live class then you can ask your queries so all the